Hey everyone, welcome back to Virtual Mosey. My name's Jose, and this is day two of Physics Week. Now behind me I've got this crazy contraption, which we'll talk a little bit more in just a second, uh, but it's actually going to be a lot of fun. This is going to be one of those times where we get to just play with physics and have some fun. Now, the whole idea behind this is actually an activity uh, called kinetic art, and what we're doing is we're creating a Rube Goldberg contraption. Now, Rube Goldberg was a cartoonist, an inventor, and also an engineer. And he had these really complicated ways of making some things do simple tasks. So it's like a marble hitting some dominoes, knocking down a cup, uh, running into uh, another marble, and eventually it just boop, hits a button, right? So it's a complicated way of achieving a simple task. Uh, and that's kind of what we're going to do uh, with this contraption back here, but before we can actually dive into it, we have to understand a little bit of the physics that goes on behind the scene. Now, the first thing I mentioned is that this was called kinetic art. And kinetic art is just, well, uh, essentially kind of uh, an artwork, kind of like what you see back here. I think it looks very fancy. And yes, it is incomplete. We're going to finish that out throughout the video. And it, kinetic just means in motion. So we have two main types of energy. We have kinetic energy, and then we also have potential energy. So potential energy is stored energy. It's energy that has the potential to move and do work. And potential energy depends on two factors. It depends on the mass of the object and also on the height of that object from the ground. So for example, I've got two ping pong balls here, and if I hold them both from the same height and let go, they both bounce back to about the same height because they both have the same mass. And since I held them initially at the same height, then they have the same potential energy, which transfers to kinetic energy as they start to move as soon as I let go. Uh, but if I hold one of them much higher off the ground than the other, then this higher object will have a much higher potential energy, which means when it bounces back, it actually will bounce back way more than the one that's closer to the ground. So the higher up you are, the higher the potential energy. And again, that's stored energy. Uh, so as soon as it starts to move, that transfers to kinetic energy. Now, we've actually experienced this every time we've gone on something like a roller coaster. So this is my quick sketch of a roller coaster. And if you take a look, this is where you would get on the cart, you know, put the seat belt on and everything. Usually, unless it's a launch coaster like the Hulk or uh, the Cheetah Hunt roller coasters, uh, usually the very first thing you do is you start to climb. Now, if you've ever stopped to think, well, why do I have to climb before I go down? Well, that's because you're trying to maximize your potential energy. Remember, the higher up you are off the ground, the higher that potential energy. So once you reach the very, very top of the first hill, you start to coast down the rest of the track. So as soon as you start to move, that potential energy starts to transfer to kinetic energy. And the higher up you are initially, the more kinetic energy you can, can pick up and continue to go through on the track. Now, if you watch the sketch closely, you notice that I did something here. I started off with a very big hill, and then after I go down, I can only go up to kind of a medium-sized hill. That's because every time you're trying to go uphill, that uses up some energy, right? And remember, there's also a lot of friction as you're moving through the tracks. So there is some loss of energy due to friction, uh, but that means that you can never go up higher than your initial drop unless something propels you. Again, like if you're on a launch coaster, then you can just feel it as it's moving. So it's actually kind of cool. And we're going to utilize some of these concepts here between potential and kinetic energy uh, to create this little contraption. So let's go ahead and start off uh, on this side. And let's just take a quick look at what it is we've got on the table here. So you'll notice I have some Hot Wheels tracks, and these are actually uh, very, very nice because 
They are smooth and you can roll down, uh, you can roll cars down the ramp, you can roll marbles even. And if all goes well, I might be able to release this marble and hopefully have it land in the funnel and eventually on my hand. So I think that's kind of cool. And really what we're doing is we're increasing the potential energy of the marble. And when we let go, it starts to roll down this ramp. That's using a lot of kinetic energy. And if the second half of the ramp were not going up, this marble would actually just shoot across the table and hit the wall on the other end of the room. I know that because that's exactly what happened when I was setting it up. <laughs> so then we have it going uphill and then I decided to kind of slow it down a bit by using a funnel. Now the reason why I'm switching things up and not just keeping a single ramp going is because remember we're creating a Rube Goldberg contraption and by definition it's got to be complicated. There has to be a lot of energy transfers here and there and we're trying to create a really complex uh, contraption that will ultimately result in something simple. In this case it's hopefully going to knock down that pyramid of cups that you see on the far end of this table. Now I invite you guys to try this at home. It's definitely a lot of fun. Uh, you don't need to do it on tables. I did that on tables just because it's easier for everything to be uh, just the right height when I'm setting things up and then it's also easier to catch it on video. But if you guys have Legos or Hot Wheels tracks or literally anything at home that you can set up and put together, feel free to use that. This is the best way to utilize uh, some recyclable materials, give it a whole new life, a, a, a fresh, uh, a breath of fresh air, if you will. Uh, this is really, really fun. Plus, you can learn a little bit about physics while you're doing it. So let's go ahead and see what this currently does. If I drop it from the ramp and I don't put my hand behind the cup or beneath the funnel, you'll find that the marble drops and it knocks down this piece of wood, but nothing else happens. So we have to find a way to transfer this downward force out to the dominoes. So that's gonna be kind of our first challenge. Really, the, the first challenge is for me to get the ping pong ball without knocking the dominoes. If you have dominoes, you, you know what I'm talking about. I'm gonna put this closer to the end here and with an insane amount of luck, hopefully this might do something cool. So we're gonna try this one more time. We're gonna release the marble. Now this time it had not enough uh, potential energy to begin with, so it didn't actually transfer all the way up the ramp. So let's take a look. And if this doesn't work, no big deal. This is just like science. We have to try it a couple of times. We're gonna pretend that it went down the ramp again. There it goes. So now we got half the dominoes falling. That's pretty good. Now, after that falls, we're gonna now have to come up with some contraption, something to connect the beginning of our design here all the way to the second half. Uh, really, the final stretch of our contraption. Here, you'll see I have a little car, and it's my hope that the little car will knock down these dominoes, and then I'm gonna set this up so that this little toy uh, train with some dominoes on the top is going to roll down these ramps and then knock down the red ball into the cups and then hooray, we have finished the Rube Goldberg contraption. But again, it's all about trial and error and we have to actually set it up. So let's start this one more time. This time I'm gonna just use the one existing uh, domino trail. Now, if you're working with dominoes at home, you definitely know that every time you set them up, they're bound to fall, and that's okay. That's totally fine. That's why you try things several times. That's why uh, you practice, and that's why being patient is definitely a good thing. Now, if you've got steadier hands than I, then this might not be too challenging for you. Um, now, I tend to shake a lot, and that's, ooh, that's scary. And that might not be the easiest way to, uh, to go about doing it. But remember, this is something that you can do while you're sitting at home waiting to try some cool things. 
Now I'm gonna go ahead and grab some more dominoes so I could hopefully lay out a line of dominoes that's gonna hit the car and then we'll work on the back end. So I'm gonna grab some dominoes here. You'll notice that you can use any of the supplies that you have at home. I happen to have a whole bunch of supplies here at Mosey because this is one of the programs that we do here at the museum. And we've done this with kids, we've done this with adults, and every time you do it, it's something different. So you can use tracks, you can use golf balls, all of these Kiva blocks, you can use Lincoln logs, but I'm gonna just focus on using some dominoes because dominoes are pretty awesome. Uh, and then let's hopefully see if we can't connect the cars here. There we go. So we're gonna connect the first half to the second or final stretch of the cars. Now again, working with dominoes is a bit of a challenge if you don't have a steady hand. So this is me doing my best to keep everything from uh, sporadically falling and ruining the experiment. Now this is of course a live take, so if it falls, that's no worries. We'll move on to the final stretch without connecting it. That one looks a little wobbly, so it's gonna sit off to the side. I don't want that to accidentally ruin my experiment here. There we go. Now if you have wider dominoes at home, you will actually have an easier time setting them up. These are actually very, very thin dominoes because they have to pack a whole bunch of them into a single tin. So these are very, very small compared to uh, some thicker dominoes. And sometimes, uh, as the manufacturer is grinding them down uh, to make sure that the corners are not sharp, they often have some that don't quite stand up. Or if they do, they're very, very tilted to one side, kind of like this one. We're gonna get those out of the way. Again, just to make sure that the experiment doesn't prematurely end, that would cause Mr. Jose to be a little upset, but it's all good, it's all science. Here we go. Now, while I'm setting up the rest of the dominoes, I mentioned that potential energy typically has to do with the object's mass and the object's position relative to the ground. Um, turns out that there are other types of potential energy as well. So we have potential energy that is stored in the form of chemical potential energy, and you find that in batteries. So batteries are actually chemical potential energy. Uh, you can also have elastic potential energy, like a rubber band or a spring. If you stretch these out, it's got a lot of potential energy so that if whatever's not holding it lets go, suddenly it flies, right? Um, so there's multiple types of potential energy. We're gonna work on setting up the final stretch of this now. Let's take a look. We're gonna put this car somewhere here. If it rolls backwards, my day might be over, but that's okay. And then here, I've got this nifty contraption using just tape. And yes, these are parts from a mini golf kit. Like I said, you can use anything you've got laying around at home. This is a perfect time to use your imagination uh, and connect whatever you've got lying around to make some cool science. There we go, we're gonna give this a shot and see if it works. And if it doesn't, well, we'll talk about what we might have been uh, able to do to uh, make it happen. So, let's take a look. We're gonna once again drop the marble here. And fingers crossed, here we go. Oh, it's down the funnel. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, oh that's okay. <laughs> all right, so it looks like it almost worked. Uh, spoiler alert, I did knock the cups down several times as I was setting them up and I accidentally moved around a couple things. I had tested it before, but it's totally fine. If it doesn't work on your first try, it's all good. It's, it's science, right? So you do multiple trials uh, and you want it to be repeatable. So I'm gonna eventually set this up again and give it a shot, but off camera. At this time though, I would love to see if you guys have had any questions throughout the video. So if there's been any questions or comments, let me know. If not, then I'll go ahead and do a super awesome, super quick recap on what we discovered. So 
Rube Goldberg is a, used to be an inventor, a cartoonist, and an engineer, and he designed some really complicated contraptions to perform simple tasks, like knocking down the cups. And in order to do that, you have to have a pretty good understanding of potential and kinetic energy and how it all transfers. Uh, this is really just a series of chain reactions or cause and effect. And kind of like we have our roller coaster here, the first thing you typically do is you climb up to the top to increase your potential energy, more potential energy when you are at the highest point of the coaster. And then as soon as you start moving, you no longer have potential energy. You're talking about kinetic energy instead, energy in motion. And then you can't really go higher than the first hill because you need more energy to climb higher. I would say that if you've ever gone uphill on skates or on a bike, uh, you know that it takes a lot of effort. This is also Florida, so it's very, very flat. So there's that. But if you're watching from elsewhere, you might know what I'm talking about. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed this and definitely try this at home. Uh, tag us, we wanna see what you come up with. Now, I hope you've had an awesome, awesome day. Stay safe and keep discovering.